Welcome to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. We are broadcasting from the Mercy Live Up Studios, heard on 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM, and around the globe, streaming online at iowacatholicradio.com and on the Iowa Catholic Radio app. I am Joe Stopulus, along with Father Zach Kautsky, and today we are joined by what I would consider a living saint. Uh, he's also a speaker at the upcoming Christ Our Life Conference, Magnus McFarlane. And, and the topic of today's show is Feeding the Hungry, centering around his mission to, uh, when he started Mary's Meals, his mission ministry at Mary's Meals. And Magnus is the founder and CEO of Mary's Meals, which is a global hunger charity. And it was founded uh, in 1993, but by 2015 had reached the milestone of providing daily meal in place of education for more than one million of the world's poorest children. He's going to join us in five minutes to talk about Mary's Meals and how we can live out our call to feed the hungry. Father Zach, would you please open us up in a word of prayer? Absolutely. Good to be here with you, Joe. And we invite our listeners to pray with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Lord our God, we offer you our whole self today, all of our weaknesses, all of our joys, all of our strengths, all of our work today we give back to you, and we ask you to bless it. Keep us in your care this day. Bless our loved ones especially those in most need of our prayers. As we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, Father, we're going to get the opportunity to talk with Magnus today about his work in fighting global hunger. And again, he's one of the foremost leaders in this in the, in the, in the world today. But before we get to that, let's talk about the need to help and ways to do it here on a local level. Looking forward to talking with Magnus about uh, what he's doing in his own part of the world. But I think here in Iowa, here in Des Moines, uh, one of the, the great organizations that I'd mentioned is Meals from the Heartland uh, that that really support feeding the the hungry. And this week, actually, they're doing a, uh, a Hunger Fight 2016, uh, which will probably be uh, a tra- they will probably pack, I think they said, 5 million, five million meals. meals, which is just incredible. Yeah. And I saw there was a, a young man yesterday who uh, would not reveal his name, but he was just packing meals, just wanted to remain anonymous as he uh, worked alone and, and helped the hungry. So I think Meals from the Heartland. I think also just keeping our eyes open uh, for people we know, maybe families that struggle financially, just keeping our eyes open for uh, for needs for them, maybe inviting them for dinner. Uh, I don't think we have to be real obvious about it, uh, but maybe just helping them out sometimes. If there's a family uh, that is in need of food or or uh, maybe around Thanksgiving time, they can't afford a big dinner like that. I think there's a great opportunity just to keep our eyes open for the people around us, uh, maybe that we know best. Yeah, most cities have shelters, right, that you can go to and serve meals there. And one of the things that Pope Francis is, is very big on right now is smelling like the flock, right? Really getting right. down. And so as good and Meals from the Heartland and supporting Mary's Meals are things that are vitally important. We need to do it. We need to do it. In addition to doing that and writing checks to very important organizations, we have to face-to-face face visit the homeless, visit the hungry. Uh, as Pope Francis said over and over again, that is when we get connected with them and we bring a human element to them. And, you know, one of the things that I've heard over and over, the most important thing you can do to a poor person on the street is, outside of giving them money, ask them what their name is. Yeah, get to know them. Get to know who yep. these people are. And, you know, that's one of the reasons we try to uh, bring our children down uh, and serve a meal once a month at the homeless shelter if we can to help our, ki- our kids. Oh, my gosh, you walk in there, they light the people up. They, this is a light that they're bringing to a very dark place, and it happens. You don't have to be... You know, you don't have to be Magnus McFarlane. You don't have to do the biggest things in the entire world. There are little things you can do right in your community, right in Des Moines or wherever you're listening, to help those around you. So we are thrilled to be joined by Magnus McFarlane, and we're going to have a conversation about feeding the hungry when we return in five minutes. Thanks for listening to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio, broadcasting on 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM from the Mercy Live Up Studio. Heard around the world, streaming online at iowacatholicradio.com and on smartphones everywhere via the Iowa Catholic Radio app. I am Joe Stopulis along with Father Zach Kautsky, and today 
we are thrilled to be joined by Magnus McFarlane. Magnus has lived in Argyll, Scotland since the age of nine and began his career as a fish farmer. However, when the Bosnian conflict was making headlines in the early 1990s, Magnus and his brother were moved to help. He was named one of 2010's top 10 heroes by CNN for his work with Mary's Meals. Magnus is married to his wife, Julie, who became his co-driver on some of the first deliveries of aid to Bosnia in 1993 and has been devoted to the charity ever since. They live in Dalmi with their seven children. Magnus, welcome to Man Up. Thank you very much for having me on. Magnus, we are we're thrilled to join you. I know that you've kind of amassed a pretty great following here in Des Moines uh, since your first your first talk at the Christ Our Life Conference, Christ Our Life. which is probably six years ago now. But I know that you've been here multiple times, and you've you've really inspired so many people around you. So again, first off, thank you for everything you do. No, thank you, and and uh, I'm always inspired when I when I come to Des Moines, and and uh, I love I love coming. I feel like it's my second home. <laughs> well, You're any, welcome anytime. Anytime, anytime. anytime. You just come on over. We'll love to have you. <laughs> thank you. Well, let's let's start at the beginning, especially for some of our listeners who may not be uh, who might not know about Mary's Meals. How did it How did it even start? Well, um, when I was in my my early twenties uh, back in 1992, uh, my brother and I. Um, just try to do one uh, small thing to help uh, the people who were suffering uh, in, in Bosnia uh, at that time as, as the former Yugoslavia um, disintegrated that terrible war there. So many refugees were suffering, and, and we just made a little appeal, asking people for food and blankets and basic things that people desperately needed. And we took one week's holiday from our work um, and dro- drove those things over there. Um, and, and came back thinking, you know, that it would be back to work as normal uh, right. to discover that, that God had a very different plan uh, for, for me because the, the, the little appeal we made just snowballed. We were overwhelmed with people's goodness and, and kindness. So you, you get to kind of plant the seed there in, in 92. How quickly did you realize that this is going to become a full-time job? Well, uh, w- w- when I came back to find that kind of avalanche of donations, Coming in, I prayed about it, and, and I, I gave up my job and sold my house, uh, and somebody gave me a truck, and I began driving that back and forth to Bosnia. But even then, I, I suppose I thought maybe I'll do this for a few months, maybe a year tops, and then and then back to, to work as normal. Um, but during the course of that first year, um, I, I, I felt maybe this is something that God really wants me to do with my with my life. And, and uh, you know, I suppose about one year later, I made, made a decision to keep keep going with this probably even then not really fully understanding it would it would really be my life's uh work but but i thank god that that it has become that well i think can you help us kind of paint a picture of the dangers that are associated i mean it's not like you're just driving from des moines to west des moines dropping off food uh can you kind of paint the picture for our <laughs> listeners and how that would work well it, so I, it was a four-day drive uh one way from from where i live in scotland to the other side of europe and, um, I mean, a lot of the time we were taking aid into refugee camps where people had fled to safer areas. So it wasn't always, um, you know, dramatic, dangerous um, adventures. Um, some of the time we were, we were taking like, medical supplies into cities that were under siege and mm-hmm. that were being um, shelled. And, and, yeah, that was a bit, a bit um, scary at, at, at times. Um, and, and probably one of the key things that, that I learned there very early on was just how essential it was to work with good uh, local uh, people who really knew what they were doing on the ground and, and really uh, looked after us. Magnus, can you tell us a little bit about, kind of on a uh, bigger picture level, tell us about the problem of childhood hunger today. What's it looking like today in, in uh, well, 2016? Yeah. Today, you know, probably um, probably something like 16,000 children will have died of, of, of hunger-related causes today, globally, just in this one wow. day. Um, o- over, over 59 million children are missing school today because of hunger, uh, because of poverty. Um, so it's still, still an enormous problem, uh, you know, in this, in this world of, of plenty, because... We, we live in a world that, that you know, where we, where we produce more than enough food for all of us uh, to, to eat well. You know, sometimes I hear 
this kind of myth that, that hunger is a, is a result of, of there not being enough food in the world or, or maybe even that there's too many people in the world. And, and, and that's nonsense. You know, there, there's enough food for, for all of us. And, and, and that's one of the, one of the, 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 the drivers behind this mission of, of Mary's Meals, this real belief that there is no, no good reason, you know, why any child in this world um, should, not, should not eat every day. No good reason why every child shouldn't be able to go to, to school. You know, no no good reason why every child can't can grow to become the person God meant them to be. Um, so, so a, a large part of our um, approach and philosophy is based on a firm, you know, confidence in 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 the innate goodness of people and and, and the willingness of of good people all over the world um, to to share what they have, so so that so that others might eat. Yeah, Magnus, we're recording this roughly five blocks from where the World Food Prize is held, which is the Nobel Prize for, for food and, and advancement. And I, I sit there and I look at the juxtaposition of where we, uh, where we talk and really celebrate feeding the world uh, through technology and, and through just plant science, and that, is, that takes place five, five blocks from us. But at the same time, I know that we're in America and, we're facing, you know, an epidemic of obesity, and just the, the the absolute tragedy. And so you're 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 right on that there is enough food to feed the world. And it's just a matter of us taking action to make it happen, right? And that's that's really that's what Mary's Meals does a great job of. And and at the end of the day, you guys do a really good job of trying to to actually physically go out and feed the world. So can you give us a quick overview of how Mary's Meals actually works? Yeah, so it's a very simple thing. You know, it's it's all about providing one meal every day uh, in a place of education for, for the world's hungriest children, poorest children. Um, and, and we serve that meal always through the local communities where those meals are served. Um, so virtually all of the work, the daily work of cooking and, and serving those meals is carried out by local volunteers, many of them who live in in real poverty themselves, but who are who are giving up their their time uh, because they also believe in this mission of ours. They also have this desire to see the children in in their villages and towns uh, fed each day at at, at school. And uh, as much as possible, uh, we also try to um, source the food that we serve uh, locally whenever possible as well. So so that way we're helping helping the local economy, supporting the, the local uh, farmer um, as, as well uh, through this work. So, so, so it, it kind of becomes a partnership between us, Mary's Meals, and, and the local community. And, and we say to them from the outset, look, you know, your responsibility is, is to make this work on a day-to-day basis, to cook and serve the food, um, and, and our part will be to provide that food uh, and, and to monitor the use of that food. Um, and it's, it's very much... a a, a partnership based on on real mutual uh, respect. It's not about us charging in from the outside and and saying we're going to solve everyone's problem right. here. It, right. it, it's it's based on that mutual respect and, and local ownership. You're listening to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. Today we're joined by Magnus McFarlane, founder of Mary's Meals, and our topic today is feeding the hungry. Magnus, uh, I'd be curious to know why the name Mary's Meals. How did you come up with the name? Well, it, it's named after Mary, the mother of Jesus. Um, I, I have a huge devotion to to her. Um, you know, even even before that first story I told you of going to help the people in in Bosnia uh, as a young man, many years before that, I'd been with my family to to Medjugorje in, in Bosnia, a place where there are reports of, of visions of the Virgin Mary. Um, and, and our family pilgrimage to that place when I was a youngster really had a profound effect on my uh, family, on our Catholic faith. It led my mum and dad to turn our home, which was a small hotel, into a Catholic uh, retreat centre. Um, so, so Our Lady has, has very much been part of our um, story since the beginning. And when we began this specific uh, work of, of feeding children in school, we felt especially that this work belonged to her, um, and we asked her to to, to pray for us and, and really to show us how she would have us 
uh, do this do this work. So uh, very much, I believe, this work belongs to her in a very special way. Well, Magnus, early on, your your goal was just to, you know, start small, and and it was and continuing to grow. How has your mission changed over the time? And maybe start with what was the mission when you first started, and what is the mission today? Well, when we first served Mary's meals in in two thousand and two, um, we, we 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 began by feeding about two hundred uh, children in in Malawi, and and um, that's just grown in this incredible way. Uh, in the years since, so that today we're, we're feeding over 1.1 million uh, children every day around the world across 12 uh, different countries. Can you, can you say that number again? And uh, over 1.1 million children every day. Uh, every, every day. day. Wow. Every day, um, and, and and those children are spread across 12 of the world's poorest countries, and lots of different you know situations, uh, you know, rural um, villages. Um, city slums in places like Haiti and India, um, the north of Kenya, were, were um, providing meals for nomadic uh, people there. Um, so lots of very different cultures and environments, but always that same simple thing, one meal every day in a place of education. And always we see the same, the same result. Children who weren't in school before begin coming because of that, that promise of a meal. I really appreciate the fact that you know you talked about when you go into these towns you go into these places that are very poor uh, you're not just storming in but rather you're coming in and and educating them as well on how to make this work how to uh, help the the hunger problem there so i think that's really 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 valuable that you're kind of teaching them the skill set that they need to be successful in providing food so i think that's uh, a wonderful idea, wonderful idea, and uh, very important that uh, when we're helping other people, that we not only help them, but we also teach them uh, the necessary skills to be successful. That, that's right, and, and it's it's one of the uh, wonderful things at this stage uh, that we have um, a generation of young people who are leaving school now, having benefited from Mary's meals. You know, many of them saying, "Without Mary's meals, I wouldn't have." gone to school without Mary's Meals I might not have been alive and, and to see those young people um, becoming the leaders in their communities, the, the people who are um, helping change things for the better uh, where they live, it's, it's a very very beautiful uh, thing to, to, to see really inspiring and it just encourages us more, more than ever to go on and, and, and to reach those, those children who are still waiting. I mean, Magnus, I'm a man I live in Iowa, uh, what can I do to fight global Poverty. I'm just one guy living in the middle of the United States. What can I do to help fight global poverty? Well, I, I think we can all be part of this mission where, wherever we live in the world, whatever our, our situation. I don't think there's anyone who can't be part of, of this uh, particular mission even. Um, you know, I, I always um, think of Mary's Meals as a fruit of, of prayer and, and, and praying for this work and for those children that we serve. Uh, is a hugely important way to be part of this mission. Um, another way to be part of this mission is is to help um, spread the word. We're not an organization that spends lots of money on um, advertising and PR agencies. It's about people um, falling in love uh, with the message and, and, and telling their friends or putting out on social media or whatever it might be. So that's a hugely important way that people can take part. And, um, and, and then, obviously, um, the, the, the only way that we feed all those children every day is because many people are kind enough to donate, to buy the food. So um, people can do that through our, through our websites. It's probably the easiest way um, to donate money to buy the food. And it's incredible to think that today, um, on average, we can feed a child for an entire school year for less than $20, $19.50 is, it, is all it costs us to feed a yeah. child for a year. Um, so so well, small, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to pull a Father Zach. Can you repeat that one more time? Yeah, it, it, it costs only nineteen dollars and fifty cents uh, to feed a child for an entire school year. Wow! So uh, uh, small donations really go a long way. Small donations are literally saving and transforming lives. And if I wanted to make a donation, what's the website? Uh, Mary's Meals USA dot org. Mary's Meals USA. Uh, and I'll make another plug. 
Uh, we always like to ask our, our listeners what books they would recommend reading. Uh, I would, I'm going to make a plug for your own book, uh, The Shed That Fed a Million Children, the, the Mary's Meal Story. So if you want to learn more about it, Magnus is too humble to be promoting all of his books and all of his great stuff. I would recommend reading that if you want to learn more about your story. Any other resources you would point people to, Magnus? Well, we have an amazing um, film uh, that's been winning awards, a documentary about the work of Mary's Meals called Generation Hope. And, and uh, it's very much focusing on those young people I talked about, those young people in their communities. Like, I, there's a young guy um, who grew up in one of the worst slums in Haiti who's becoming a famous uh, singer-songwriter there uh, who never would have gone to school without Mary's Meals. And, and it's a very moving film, attracting a lot of attention. And if, if people want to find out how to get that, sc- that film or organize a screening, perhaps, in their community, uh, again, it's just a matter of going onto our website to find out information about that. Magnus, thank you so much. I mean, yeah, you, right. Thank you for everything you do for us, and we look forward to seeing you here uh, back in September at the Chrysler Life Conference. I'm looking forward to coming over and seeing you all again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for joining us, and we'll keep you in our prayers today. Thank you so much. Hey, we are all, we are all called to, to serve and feed the hungry and thirsty around us, and, and you know there are many opportunities to do it here in Des Moines and around the world. And Our recommendation is just find what works best for your life and start doing it. Up next, we're going to have your 99-second homily with Father Zach, so stick around, and we will be right back. Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. We are broadcasting from the Mercy Live Up Studios on 11:50 a.m., 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM. I am Joe Stopulus, along with Father Zach Kautsky, and our deepest thanks again to Magnus McFarland for joining us today about the topic of feeding the hungry. I honestly believe we just talked with a living saint, and obviously join us at the Christ Our Life Conference to listen to Magnus on a much larger on a much larger stage, but. The work he's doing is is it's obviously life changing in the lives of millions of children. And what are we called to in our little part of the world? What are we called to do? Because it's obviously something Jesus commissions us to do that. What can you do where you're at in your home to help feed those around you? Joe, when he was talking about the the process <clears throat> the process that he went through to get uh, Mary's meals off the ground and how it all began, it reminded me of the. The parable of the mustard seed, which is you know the smallest of all seeds, uh, but becomes this huge, large plant, and it just kind of reminded me that's way that the Lord often works is He just starts with a humble invitation, with our own gifts and talents, with our recognizing a need, and then acting on that. And so I think the takeaway for me really was to you know be attentive to those little ways that I can help people because it's often an invitation from the Lord to do something. Great. Yep. Well, now for your 99-second homily with Father Zach. Our gospel today is from Matthew chapter 9. The disciples of John approached Jesus and said, why do, why do we and the Pharisees fast so much, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. We've been talking today about feeding the hungry and and this issue of hunger around the world. And just a a thought today is the fact that 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 hunger that we experience when we do fast is a symbol of the deeper spiritual hunger that we have for God and for heaven, that we should feel for God and heaven. And very often this world makes us too comfortable and we easily forget that this is not our true home. This is really like, as Peter Kreeft says, the earth is really like a motel room. It's just a stopping over point for our true home. We are pilgrims, truly, traveling through a foreign land. And what we uh, have in fasting, and the gift that we have in fasting, is that we're, we're reminded that uh, our destination is truly heaven. And we want to pray that we reach that in safety. And so... If we're men living our faith out truly, then we're going to continue to long for heaven and true happiness. And so I think hunger can be a, a just a, a spiritual reminder to us of of heaven, but also it can be a way of being in solidarity with those who truly uh, experience physical hunger. Yeah, and being in America in 2016, we have basically every need taken care of for, obviously not all of us, but 
most of us don't ever really worry about where our next meal is coming from. We don't worry about clean water or any of that. It's an, ass- and it's an assumed good in our lives. And so to take, I mean, even more so for us. I mean, Jesus talked about fasting a lot. And gosh, there were people starving all over the place in his time. And we, how much more so do we need fasting today when we are literally have every need taken care of for us from the time we are born to the time we die? Very few of us will ever have to face missing a meal due to funds or not being able to find food. So how much more do we need that spiritual discipline uh, of fasting today? So, again, our thanks to Magnus McFarlane uh, and the call to all of us to take that first step, finding what it is that we can do within our community, wherever we are, in order to help feed those around us. So, Father Zach, would you please end us in a word of prayer? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this time together. We pray that we will take the words you've spoken to us through our guest and help us to be the man that you've created us to be. And may Almighty God bless you, our listeners, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you again for joining us on Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. For Father Zach Kautsky, I'm Joe Stopulis. It's time to man up.